spring. I had a pretty good day spraying yesterday. I actually ran out of chemical before I finished that field and we don't have any more. So we got a couple empty totes to take back. If it rains this afternoon, I might run them up. They got to go up to Rycroft. That's uh, I don't know, an hour, an hour's drive or whatever. So, But for right now, I got to make a bunch of bags. Unfortunately, a, a lady had texted me a while back. I forgot all about it. So we were combining anyways. And uh, most people that get feed here, they're good. They know we farm, we grow the grain. It's our own grain. So spring seeding, fall harvest, they, uh, they usually try to stock up a little bit before or they're quite patient around those two times because they know not only are you not, you know, around to do it but even if you were all the tractors are tied up doing something else like this tractor runs an auger that other tractor runs the grain back or the auger our 2394 runs the dryer our old cock shut uh, 1955 that runs another auger so you know even on a day say if it was if it had rained the night before if, if, if we're drying grain, we basically need all the trackers and then nothing can be on the mill or holding up the bags. Who, ri who ripped? That, that was Teddy Vipper. He, he did it? Yeah. That crazy dog. All right, so me and Buddy are going to head down now. The baler man, he left one small bale out in the field for us. So we're going to grab that before, uh, before it rains and gets too muddy to even do that. Okay, so me and Buddy went down to get that bale, and then we came up, we put the lids on the grain bins, closed them, uh, shoveled up a bunch of the piles of grain that were around, like when you switch from one grain to the other, <clears throat> it's good to clean out those hoppers on those swing augers. Normally we just crank them up, dump them out right where they are because by the end of it it's just a bunch of dirt and chaff anyways, or dust and chaff. But now that we got these critters, these couple steers and these chickens, we uh, take it up and give it to them. Chickens like to peck through that stuff and, and uh, everything else. So, But now I'm here in the grain dryer, coming to you from the grain dryer. So we leave our grain dryer outside. Unfortunately, we don't have a big enough shed to put it in. We were always going to build a roof over it, but then we kind of thought, like, what the heck's the point? Because... I mean, I don't know, it's all metal. There's not a whole bunch of, like there's really not a whole bunch to them. So we just sort of thought, well, we'll just clean it out really good every fall. And make sure that <clears throat> grain down in this bottom sump here, right there, uh, all that grain I gotta get cleaned out of there. And it's not a very big area. Like, I mean, there's my hand. So it's only, it's not like you're gonna be at this for hours and hours and hours. But our batch dryer is a little older. It doesn't have a lot of, uh, doesn't have a lot of the new technology or uh, what's the word like digital stuff so there's not a lot of wires to it you know it's there's some tubes some like heat sensor tubes and stuff that uh, run into the dryer but other than that I mean the only reason to keep it inside would be to keep it looking new and we didn't buy this new and it already looked fairly fairly used so we're not going to uh, we're not the kind of people that really like dedicate too much time to making stuff shiny or whatever like we use it we take care of it we do the maintenance on it but it shows its age i mean and it, it, it's going to right because why wouldn't it pretty good rain last night very glad to be done combining we uh I have two bins of canola that are gonna go. They're uh, a little bit uh, green. They're from a couple years ago. So, and we fixed the grain back the other, last week or whatever, showed a video on that. So anyways, I wanted to go up before the truckers come and get good and prepared. And I wanted to load out a couple loads of that canola to make sure the grain back still worked and wouldn't just blow shear pins when they showed up. <clears throat> that all worked fine. So I loaded some onto our single axle truck and Dad's always telling us, me, Corey, 
my mom. He's like, you guys, that box is way too big. You're gonna wreck the truck. Don't fill it up. Of course, we don't listen and it's not our fault really. I mean, it's kind of, if you can get what I'm saying, it's kind of a, a, you know, a stupid thing to have a, you know, a big, a big truck box on a truck and, and you can't even use it, right? So anyways, I probably put too much on there. Back out of the shop yesterday. Boom. Broke the axle. That's the same axle Corey broke last year. I wasn't doing YouTube videos that long ago. I just started this like a month ago, so, or two months ago. So that didn't make a video. So anyways, at least I know what axle I need. I'm pretty sure it's a broken axle. I heard a snap, so. Although not 100% my fault either, and I'll show you why. A hole over here, where I backed into, that I expected, I guess, that over the time, somebody would have filled the hole in. So, probably 95% my fault, 5% somebody else's fault. Actually, this is crazy. That's how much it rained last night. There was a hole right here that I backed into. I backed into it, and that's deep. That's like a foot deep, two feet deep. So, I backed into that hole, and uh, of course, my dad's kind of frustrating too, because he's... He probably assumed I was just ramming on it and trying to get it out. All I did was back into that hole and I just put it into first and it snapped. So I'm not sure if there's actually something else wrong with the rear end or, I don't know. But anyways, we're gonna look. I got a trucker coming today. I'm gonna set an auger up because I can't drive that truck now. So I'm gonna set an auger up right where it's at and I'm gonna unload that truck right onto the trucker and then we're gonna go up and unload the out of the bin with the grain back. But yeah, as you can see by that hole, it rained a lot last night. That's crazy. I'm glad I had all the bin roof shut. Okay, so me and Buddy got our bags made and I got that hopper out from underneath of that uh, wet bin. I just want to shed some light on PPE, specifically coveralls. Anything that PV Mart, Princess Auto sells, stores like that, leave it on the shelf. It's just absolute junk, absolute junk. So I did work in the oil patch for like 10, 11 years or whatever. You know, uh, FR coveralls, Nomex coveralls, <clears throat> things that are up to industry standard. You know, you can get those things on, you can start rigging, tripping, doing all the stuff you need to do on an oil rig. They'll stand up, you can get covered in invert, covered in diesel, covered in chemicals, you can wash them, they'll stand up. This absolute junk that you buy at, uh, at PV Mart, like, it's been doing, you know, light duty stuff around the farm with me, making bags. It just, it's just shredded. Like it gets, it gets close to a flame or a spark, it's got a hole in it. Zipper's tricky on it. Uh, rips like it's made of tissue paper. So, what are those? They're like 80 bucks. See, that's the difference too. We're like 60, 80 bucks. Just go get a $180 pair of coveralls. You need 14 pairs of those throughout your 12 month year on the farm you know nine of which you're going to spend inside because it's winter anyways so for the <clears throat> few months in the summer and the spring that you're going to actually be outside needing coveralls you're going to need like 14 pairs anyways so just go get one good pair of coveralls and forget about this cheap i wish they couldn't make it any environmentalists or people like that watching that's where your complaint should be forget about the fossil fuel industry forget about that altogether. this mass production of absolute garbage that doesn't last to the end of the day, that is what's messing up the environment. You know, the garbage dumps, they're full of this stuff. Anyways, I just, uh, I only made it halfway from the shop and I couldn't take it anymore. There was a rip in the back of the leg, it was getting all fetched up on my feet. So, boom, stripped them down, they can sit right there till I get back, boom, right in the fire pit. Because they're not fire retardant, so they'll, they'll go up, they'll go up right now like a piece of paper. Okay, so Buddy and I just popped in for lunch. We uh, cleaned out that hopper, got this auger set up over here for when the Super Bees come to get our canola. I wanna get that truck empty because that's got a broken axle. Once I get it empty, I can <clears throat> jack it up. I'll just do it right there. It's not hard to take the axle out. Jack it up, see which axle's broken, and then uh, get one ordered. I did find them on the internet last night. Easier to find them when you've already ordered them once, because you know uh, you know what you're looking for. 
supper i got some late people uh, coming to pick up green around seven and <coughs> a little after that so i'm going to just get the bags that i made that people aren't coming for i'm gonna get them tied up i'm going to get them put in the shed it is supposed to snow overnight and into the morning i'm going to clean out my hopper over here got a bit of canola in it move this auger out of the way that super b was here successfully got that loaded and then I'm going to take that axle out, <clears throat> take those bolts off, just make sure that it is the axle that's broken, maybe something else happened, I don't know. But that's going to be in plan for right now. Okay, I'm still waiting for one guy to show up for his feed, so I thought I'd see if his axle is broken. So, if this comes loose and just this cap falls off, that's not good. Because it should be attached. I'm trying to get this washer off. What's going on here? I don't think the axle's broken. I think Robbie's got bigger problems. should come now. All right, let's see what she looks like here. I think it's gonna come. Stupid thing. I should have brought it. Uh, to set the phone on. I'm gonna put my phone down and then I'll just pull this out and we'll see if it's broken. All right, so I'm here in the shop. Uh, heaters are both rocking. It is getting cold out there. Winter, I believe, will be here in the morning. If it, we get any form of precipitation, it's going to come in the form of snow, I'm pretty sure. Sort of unfortunate. I hope we do get another week or two of good weather in October because my wife was up north today. She picked up all our liquid wild oat chemical. Uh, we'd certainly love to get that put down this fall and get some fall fertilizer applied to and get that all worked in but so just a bit ago I, I just loaded the last guy here for feed tonight that's it for the night i'm gonna go in i took that one axle out of the driver's side uh my wife when she was going up to the bins last year she broke that when i backed out of the shop last night i heard a snap and i was like oh okay well i broke that axle again obviously there's something wrong that's the axle from last year so I pulled that one out. I was going to film doing it, but it's cold out there. My phone froze, battery died. It was ridiculous anyways. I wasn't going to hold it. So I pulled that one out. It's not broken. So then I was like, well, maybe the passenger side. Boom, passenger side. Broken. So I'm going to go in tonight. Get on the internet, find another one. I, uh, I don't know who gets the record for breaking the axle the best. I broke this one. My wife broke that one. I'm not sure. I would say mine's a cleaner break as opposed to a rough break. I don't know. But anyways, anybody that's watching, thank you for that. Any new people, welcome. And uh, as always, if you're liking farming, learning about farming, seeing broken axles, listen to a guy complain about coveralls, I will be uh, doing videos every few days, I think. So if you want to subscribe to the channel, you will get those notifications. See you all tomorrow.